the large ice masses retreated after the last ice age, about 12,000 years ago. People began to repopulate what is now Sweden and Norway. But who were they? Was it one group of people or more? And where did they come from? One of the researchers who is focused on finding answers to these questions is Matthias Jacobson, who is trying to map out our evolutionary history. And one answer may be lying here, on the island of Gotland. At an excavation site in Stora Bjerg, south of Visby, the remains of a man who lived about 9,000 years ago were found. This is a man who lived, probably lived much of his life on Gotland. He was from a hunting and gathering community. We can see that from, from isotopes. We can see that he's been eating quite a lot of uh, marine food. And he has a point of an arrow attached to, to his hip, so it looks like he's been shot by, by an arrow. So he, he died a violent death. We're interested in, in trying to figure out how people colonized Scandinavia. So we don't really know who the people were and where they came from. These questions couldn't be answered when the body was discovered in the 1950s. But since then, technology and DNA research has made major advances. To understand how the Stor Bjergsman fits into our history, we need to take a closer look at how research into our lineage is performed with our genes. Half of our genetic material comes from our mother and half of the genetic material comes from our father. So that means that we can actually trace an individual's genetic material. We can trace it back to the parents, to the grandparents, and we can also check horizontally on relatedness. For example, we can find cousins, but also we can find genetic relationships that are kind of embracing a group that are slightly more related to each other compared to another group that perhaps lives in another geographic area. By comparing the genetic codes between different groups then and now, researchers get an opportunity to trace back and see which genes have survived and which have died out. With the help of these results, Matthias and his team can come to different conclusions about relations of groups and our evolutionary history. Just recently, Matthias and his colleagues were the first team in the world to successfully extract DNA from the man from Storobjars, as well as six other individuals who lived in Scandinavia during the same period. And you can take a tiny, tiny small piece, you can take off a tiny bit of a root of a tooth. And you take this small, small sample, you take it into our ancient DNA lab, and then, then we're into an extraordinarily clean environment because we as humans, we spread a lot of DNA around us. And, and these very, very small pieces contain very, very little DNA from the individual who lived uh, nine, 10,000 years ago. Once the genetic code from the Scandinavian Stone Age individuals is mapped, the next step was to compare with other existing findings in the database. These samples came from people who lived elsewhere in Europe at about the same time. Then, something very interesting was discovered. There were reference data from uh, southern and western Europe, and there was reference data from eastern Europe, today's Russia, for example. And the first and, uh, thing that we noted was that the people in Scandinavia at this time, uh, eight, nine, ten thousand years ago, they were a mixture of these two groups. So they had genetic material both from the southwest and from the northeast. People who were living in the eastern part of Scandinavia, they were genetically more similar to the people from the southwest of Europe, whereas the people on the very west in Scandinavia, they were genetically more similar to the people who were living in the east. So that was kind of a, a pattern that surprised us a lot. And the best explanation for that is that you had two waves of migrations into Scandinavia. One from the south that starts colonizing from the south and into modern day Sweden and southern Norway. And then the, the second group of people are coming north and they're following the Atlantic coast of Norway from the north and then southward and then meeting the other group and these two groups then mixed in different gradients. Thanks to this study, we are able to confirm something that previously had only been suspected by archaeological findings, that there were at least two early migration waves into Scandinavia after the last ice age. 
one from the southwest, and one from the northeast. But what about the man from Storabjerg? Is he related to today's Swedes, and if so, how? To answer this, the team compared the man's DNA with genetic samples from today's Scandinavians. Genetically, the man from Storabjerg, he's one of the, the individuals who have most of the western or southwestern genetic materials. He and his kind of the, the group of people related to him, they're living on for a few thousand more years, but after that time, they're basically disappearing. And at that time, there's a new group of people coming into Scandinavia. They have their ancestry of people starting from modern-day Turkey and modern-day Middle East. A little bit of the genetic material is coming from uh, the earlier people, like represented by the Stubabias. So there's some genetic material coming into this uh, new mixed group. But then if we continue onwards in time, when we can get to the Bronze Age, there's new groups of people coming in. So if we sum all these up together, maybe the people who live in Scandinavia today have perhaps five, 10, perhaps 15% of the genetic material descending from the Stuabias man and, and his group. Thus, the modern Swedes DNA is a product of people who have come here over a long period of time, which continues even today. We do not have one origin. Rather, we are a mix of all those who wandered onto Scandinavian soil since the retreat of the glaciers more than 10,000 years ago. And although the man from Stora Bjerg doesn't provide all the answers of our origins, he is yet one of all the other small but indispensable parts that together reveal to us the map of our history.